Good morning and thank you for joining us at Forever Family Animal Hospital. I'm Dr. Armstrong and today we're going to talk to you about our surgery instruments. So um, there are different surgery packs that have different instruments in them and different surgeries require different kinds of instruments. So today we're going to go through each of the instruments and go through their special names and each of them has a special task for tissue handling. So we're going to start right here with our spay pack. So this is called our um, scalpel handle or blade handle. And we have ours color coded to help us remember um, which instruments go in each pack to try to keep them together if we're washing multiple packs at a time. So this one um, was recently used and cleaned and dried and we're getting ready to pack it up again to go into the autoclave and get sterile. So this is a blade handle. So the scalpel blade slips onto this little piece here. There's like a little bit of a step in there and the blade will slip on to this piece. There's different sizes of blades, um, different tips, and we use those for different kinds of um, approaches for what we're looking for. So I would use typically a 10 blade or a 15 blade in a spay or neuter procedure. So this is our blade handle. Now we have two different kinds of forceps. So this one's called a rat tooth forcep. So um, if you look really closely, there's two little tiny teeth there on the tip of the uh, forceps. And this helps me kind of grab things and hang on to it really well. So if I'm going into a body wall for a spay or to a, a exploratory surgery, like a foreign body, this really gives my body wall up so I can kind of puncture it with my blade. So this is called the rat tooth forceps. This is my brown Adson tissue forceps. These have some little tiny teeth on them. These are kind of our go-to to grab for um, other sorts of tissue handling, anytime I'm moving um, things around. They can be a little bit traumatic to the tissue, so we have to be careful which ones we use it on, but this is kind of our general um, tissue forcep. This is our needle driver. So the needle driver is what holds our um, suture. So we grab the suture with, uh, on the needle and we can clamp down on it. So if you hear that, that's the clamping sound. And we can clamp down on that needle and we can do the suturing that we need to do. It's also super cool because it has a cutting device right here um, and that will cut my suture when I'm done with it. So I can do everything a little more efficiently since I can grab the needle and cut it with the same device. These come in different sizes. A lot of the equine surgeons use really long ones if you're getting into deep places. Um, I have little hands, I work on small animals, I really like these little ones, but they do make these in many different sizes. These are called the Alice tissue forceps. These are kind of good for just kind of grabbing on to different kinds of tissues, especially if they're going to be removed from the body. So you can see the little tiny teeth on there. Those can be traumatic to tissues too, so we have to be careful what tissues we use these on. A lot of times too, if I'm not doing any sorts of those kinds of surgeries where I'm removing a lot of tissue, I'll even use this to clamp my drape to my tray to keep my sterile field kind of continuous. These are called operating room scissors. These are just sterile scissors that we use to cut drapes, cut suture, um, anything that needs to be cut in the OR. So these are called OR scissors. These are Metzen bombs. So they make curved and straight Metzen bombs. So these are curved and nice and little for my little hands. I love Metzen bombs. These are used to cut tissue, um, extend incision lines, Phenomenal. So uh, anytime I go under the skin and I'm trying to get down to the body wall, we use the Mets and Bombs to try to get some of the fat out of the way. Fantastic, multi-use tool, love Mets and Bomb scissors, okay? It's also really important for them to be very sharp um, so they cause less tissue trauma. So Mets and Bomb scissors. Here we have two Carmalt. So Carmalt clamps have some really cool teeth on them. So if you look here, um, you can see that the grooves are like longitudinal. They're going lengthwise on the instrument. And so when I put this on a artery or some sort of tissue pedicle and you clamp down like that, it's doing a crushing force onto those tissues. So this helps stop bleeding, really helps kind of crush those tissues 
I use these a lot in spays and neuters to try to get um, the tissue to stop bleeding. Uh, fantastic instruments. They're really good at what they do. Um, car malt. Uh, so I do these with every spay, every neuter to get what I need done. Now this pair of clamps here, these are called my Kelly, my Kelly clamps. Okay. And so these have different kinds of grooves on them. So these are going to run perpendicular to the instrument rather than the longitudinal that you just saw. And these are my Kelly clamps. Okay. So these are kind of to act as a hemostat um, in a way. All right. These are my mosquito hemostats. So these have another kind of groove. So if you look closely on here, they're just like the Kelly's, but instead of stopping halfway, the grooves go all the way down to the base of the instrument. So these are called mosquito hemostats. And these um, are great for just kind of clamping little arteries, little tissues, um, just handling what you need to. Okay, so mosquitoes. These little guys are called um, towel clamps. Let me just get them off my spay hook. So towel clamps are pretty cool. We use these for lots of different things. They have a really sharp point on them here and they help me when I'm draping in with my towels and my lap sponges uh, and whatnot, my drapes. So these are great. We kind of do what we call four corners with them where I have them on each corner of my incision area to keep everything sterile. I also use them if I need to, to kind of pin tissue out of the way. Uh, very, very many functions for these, but these are called towel clamps. And then the last instrument that I have in my spay pack is called the spay hook. So um, super cool. And basically what we do is we have our spay incision. We kind of go in on either the left or the right side. And what we do is we kind of slide down the body wall. So away from the organs along the outside body wall we turn the hook and then we kind of scoot in and pull up and usually we can find the uterus that way. Sometimes this can be hard to do, sometimes uteruses are hard to find, um, but this is one great tool that we have to keep our incisions small and to kind of go in and fish out that uterus for us. So again, we kind of sneak in along the body wall so we're not hurting any organs. We turn our hook so now it's facing the interior of the pet scoot our way in and pull up and we can find the uterus usually that way. Sometimes we have to fish multiple times, sometimes we try the other side, um, but in general a fantastic tool to use. So um, we also have some gauze in our pack. So this is our surgery gauze. It has these cool blue lines in it and this is so they can be seen on an x-ray. So I'm sure everyone's heard the horror stories of gauze and instruments being left inside of people and pets, um, but this helps us to eliminate that problem. So we count our gauzes prior to surgery and after surgery. Um, I'm very neurotic about where I place my gauze to make sure that it can't go inside the pet's abdomen. Um, and we have the little blue lines on there which makes them radio opaque meaning my x-ray machine can detect these. So sometimes after major surgeries, we will take an x-ray and confirm that we don't see any gauze in the dog's or cat's belly, just to make sure and play it safe and be thorough. So this is our surgery gauze. So we count them prior to surgery, we count them after surgery, and they are sterile in our packs. So when we have everything cleaned and dried and all organized, we wrap it up really nice and then we're gonna use just regular masking tape on the outside of the pack to just kind of keep everything together. And then we use something called indicator tape. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's these little tiny lines on the indicator tape. And we put that on the outside of the pack just so after it's done being autoclaved, it'll turn black and then we'll know that that pack is sterile. So and the last thing we put in there too is something called the OK strip. So the OK strip is kind of a final uh, marker that we have near the instruments to show that those are sterile, they ran through the process OK, very important. OK, so this is kind of what a complete pack looks like. So this one was um, finished from us and it's got everything all wrapped up. We do two layers in case we need to sterilely hand off the pack and we have it just kind of covered with some masking tape and we have the indicator tape right here and you can see that it has turned black, meaning it has been autoclaved. So this is a pack that's ready to use for surgery, ready to go, and it has all of these instruments in there that I may need. 
So this is kind of a surgery pack in a nutshell. Um, most of the instruments that we use every day and um, I'm excited to share that information with you and show you how cool these instruments are. Um, they are very expensive, so we have to maintain them, take good care of them, have them sharpened, special order them. Um, ours are German surgical instruments, so they make some of the best surgery instruments in the world. Uh, and they can last you decades if you take really good care of them. So that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to email me at askthevet.ffah at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And here we are at Forever Family Animal Hospital.